I think it's true to say that even for introverts, this time where we have been in shelter in place mode for a while now, it has brought some blessings, but now even for introverts, it's becoming a challenge. And there can be a secret desire in all of us to say, let's just go back to the way things were. Let's go back to normal. Let's go back to the way things were. But that's not possible at this point. You and I know this in our hearts and minds, that things have changed. Things have changed in big ways. If we know even the news of the last few days, 14 point million jobs, 14.7 million jobs evaporated in April alone. Our phones have become a central nervous system of our activity each day. The average person spends 5.4 hours on their phone every day, and that's probably increased just a little bit during this time of shelter in place. We've also seen that this COVID-19 is now a top killer in the United States above cancer and other things, whereas 60 days ago, 60 days ago, it wasn't even in the top 100 in the world as a killer. Things changed very fast, and they continue. Even if we start to come back to things slightly, it will be a gradual thing, and we'll be in this for months for sure. So prepare yourself that way. But during the normal times before COVID-19, people had complaints, just constant activity, constant schedules, worshiping children's sports in so many ways, spending time, energy, sacrifices on it. It's amazing. There were complaints then, and now there's complaints of a different sort. <laughs> We can't go out, we don't see people, etc. So what's, we don't want to go back to normal. We want to actually take on a sense of going forward, always forward. St. Junipero Serra, I love his words. And of course, he was a Spanish speaker, so he said siempre adelante. But it was one of his, his, one of his adages he used all the time. Always forward, always forward. And we should have the same mentality now as Christians, as disciples of Jesus Christ, to say always forward, siempre, siempre adelante. And in that, we're always going forward towards Jesus Christ and what he's calling each of us to do each day and to follow his will, which is where our peace, our happiness will be found. I've been reading an interesting book by Corey Ten Boom called The Hiding Place, and it's about a Christian family that was in the underground workings in Holland during World War II, hiding Jewish people, etc. But one of the lines struck me when one of the aunts uh, that was living with the family had sort of constant complaints about the kids that were living in the home. An unfamiliar th image, I'm sure. But as she was discontent there, after her death, one of the kids said to the mom, why did um, why did Auntie Jans always seem so discontent with everything here? And why was she so content with things at the other house she used to live in? And the mother responded back, well, she was actually miserable at the last place. And she was complaining about this place, but it was better than the, the last place. And she realized, and she said then, the mother said to the child, my dear, you understand that happiness is something that we make inside ourselves. It's not something contingent or dependent on our exterior environment. It's something inside us. And it's a truth. We can be discontent in the normal that was there before COVID-19. We can be discontent now. And as we go back, we can find all kinds of things to complain about. But we want to go siempre adelante, always forward towards the Lord and to that goal of heaven. That is our one goal. Jesus talks about heaven. In my Father's house, that's what he's talking about. There are many dwelling places, he says in today's gospel. Dwelling places, let's take a look for a moment what that means. He actually says hodos uh, for, or excuse me, mone. Mone is the Greek word for place that he's using. It means room or dwellings. In the old, um, old versions of the scriptures in different places, it says mansions, but it's really rooms or dwellings. Places where they dwell with the life of the Trinity. That's what heaven is. Let's just really put that out there, too, as a truth to keep in our minds and hearts. Heaven is not some Disneyland or some version of where there's all kinds of, like, 
you know, dry ice machines and all this stuff sitting around and we got, you know, frolicking around. It's, that's maybe in our heads, but that's not truth. The truth is, it's the life of the Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, unity in love, where we have fullness of satisfied desire, eternal gladness, consummate delight, and perfect happiness. That's the Father's house. Jesus needs to ascend to his Father and send the Holy Spirit among his disciples to do greater works than he did. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So he's the way. He's the path, the road. He's the truth. The fullness of the truth resides in the Catholic Church, resides in Jesus Christ, who is the truth, who dwells there in his mystical body, the church. And if we look at this for a moment, no other major religious figure in human history has claimed what Jesus has claimed. Muhammad denied the fatherhood of God even. If you take a look at Muhammad and the religion of Islam, Buddha too. Buddha just taught no specific doctrine of God. Buddha's name was actually Siddhartha Gautama. Buddha is a title, meaning enlightened one, that he used. But in fact, technically, Buddha was an agnostic about God. Some forms of Buddhism are agnostic to this day. Therefore, neither Muhammad nor Buddha nor all the others that claim these different ways they never claimed to be the way to the Father. They never did. They claimed to show you a path to Allah or to Nirvana. These are not the fatherhood of God, the Father's house. Only Jesus proposes that God is a Father. He and his teachings are the only way to the Father. They're the only way. This passage we have in the gospel today from John chapter 14 from the Last Supper is the most common one I get to proclaim at funeral masses. Funeral masses, we should bring the truth to mind that Jesus is our only way. He's our only truth. He's our only life. He's the one to show us the Father. He who has seen me has seen the Father, he tells us. And then he says that beautiful thing at the end that's emphasized when he says, Amen, Amen, I say to you. He's speaking as God when he says that. Whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and they will do greater ones than these, because I'm going to the Father. Jesus says this. What are those greater works? What are those greater works than his? I mean, he just walked on water, changed water into wine, fed 5,000 people with just a handful of things and material to work with. Miracles bringing Lazarus back from the dead. These works his disciples will do and greater ones than these. What are those greater ones? What are those miracles that he's talking about? They're the sacraments. They really are. No matter how ordinary the sacraments may appear to our eyes, our natural eyes, if we sharpen our supernatural vision through our own faith, our adherence to God's truths, that will sharpen what's really going on there is, in fact, a miracle. Take confession for a moment. Please do. Go to confession. Don't just take it. Go to confession. Please go to confession. There's a miracle that happens there. There's a miracle. The theologians of the church have talked about this through the centuries. It's a miracle. St. Thomas Aquinas says this. What is remarkable is that Jesus adds, and greater works than these Will he do? Speaking of today's gospel passage, Christ is speaking of this result or work when he says that believers will also do the works that I do and greater ones than these will he do. For the justification of the wicked is a greater work than the creation of heaven and earth. For the justification of the wicked, considered in itself, continues forever. But the heavens and the earth will pass away. I'm going to read that again because it's, he's talking about what is the justification of the wicked. It's somebody who's been forgiven of their sins through either an initial baptism as an adult or by confession itself. And he's specifically treating confession in this passage. For the justification of the wicked is a greater work than the creation of heaven and earth. 
When we go to confession, receive absolution, and we've been contrite for our sins, that's a greater work than the creation of heavens and the earth. Look around. It's greater than that. This is also another reason why we say in every confession, it's been one month since my last confession, or however long it's been, not only because this is the period of time where I'm confessing these sins, because prior to that they were confessed and forgiven, but also how could I forget the day I received absolution for my sins from Jesus words through the priest through the instrument of the priest how could I forget that day it was a miracle it was a miracle my interior life was wiped clean by the blood of the lamb how could I ever forget that moment that day where I went that is a miracle it's a miracle that is greater than the raising of Lazarus this is witnessed to by the saints of the church and, and Jesus himself talks about it. This is the beauty of it. And I know this treasure as a priest. I remember one time myself going to confession to one of my brother priests, and I was coming home uh, in the car, and I looked around, and I, the, the sky was bluer. The cloud configuration was beautiful. Beautiful, more beautiful than any other scene I had seen at, to, at, up to that point. The grass was even greener and almost radiant. These... This is, comes from the, the purity of soul that is a gift from Jesus in confession. It is a beautiful thing. Of course, it's received in the mode of the receiver. So if we're not contrite, if we're going in there just sort of as a routine, boy, it, it won't happen in that way because we will have blocks in front of Jesus' grace. But with an open heart saying, I really repent of my sins, that miracle will go even deeper, even more to the core of our being. And some have, you know, some apprehension about the sacrament, but boy... Just go in there with a, a bit of courage, because you always need courage going in. You always need courage. There's no doubt about that. But it will bring such great joy, and you'll be able to go forward then. Not looking and staring at your past and saying, oh, I'm such a schmo. But to move forward, that's where Jesus wants us to go. He's like, yeah, I know you're a sinner, but I got a job for you. I got, a, I got things for you and I to do together as we go forward. The miracle of confession, I cannot emphasize enough, and it's been available even during this COVID time in our diocese, in our parishes, and so few have tapped into it as a miracle. And it changes things, and it makes you happy or because of the grace of Jesus, and because also you have this great hope for heavenly grace and heavenly joy with the life of the Trinity that is, you've just been given a foretaste of it, where the relationship with God has been restored, and then you have peace in your conscience. So many people have this agitated conscience. It's kind of behind why so many people had complaints, too, during the time of normalcy, quote-unquote normalcy, before COVID-19. And at this point, we're moving forward, and we have to move forward in our spiritual life more so, prepare ourselves for heaven, since you and I do not know how much time we have left. I'm not going to say that to scare anybody, but to say, let's, let's be warned. Because we don't know how much time we have. None of us do. Some doctors have been talking on the internets, you know, for, a, for reasons of kind of preparation. And they say that almost 60% of us will, will at some point get this, either now or later or Maybe a year from now, COVID will be around sort of thing. It, it's, it's possible. Now, there's lots of information out there, and I'm just going to say that, well, what if we get it, and we, won't, we don't even know where we got it? Well, then we got to prepare, you know, and to offer up our sufferings because we're a royal priesthood and a holy nation, a chosen race in Jesus. So as we move forward, as we start to come back to the sacraments more, especially the Eucharist and confession, as on a more regular basis, coming out of our houses gradually. Again, this, it's going to be a while. But we want to go forward in this, in, our, in holiness. Go to confession monthly as a family. I implore you, I, I, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. Every time you receive that sacrament. And these are the greater works that Jesus was talking about. Use holy water. I've actually transformed our holy water sort of uh, Easter water font now to little individual bottles. Take one when you come for a Eucharistic visit to the church. Bring it home. Bless your children with that holy water. Use it yourself in the morning and at night. 
The demons hate holy water because it brings us closer to Jesus, the image of the invisible God. This is a beautiful thing. Use that, and it will lead you to greater holiness, greater joy. The disciples of Jesus knew that these greater works would bring great joy to the world. That's why they talked about them and preached about them and spread the good news. Are we acting as we should be in God's sight? Have we before? And how is it going now? And then as we reemerge from shelter in place someday and gradually come back to things, we want to go forward, not back to our old habits when we're stressed and filled with anxiety and those little habits that we had overeating, overdrinking, the websites we looked at. We don't want to go back to that at all. We want to repent of it through confession ultimately, but also going forward, having a plan, writing down a plan, a concrete plan of how we will come back and the changes we will make. So put in the calendar. You're going to Mass on the weekend, either Saturday night or Sunday morning. Put in the calendar. We put important things in the calendar. Put that in the calendar. Put the monthly trip to confession, or more often, St. Padre Pio said weekly is a good practice because he said in your house you got dust that builds up over one week. The same way with your soul. When it builds up even small sins that continue forward to weaken your life with God. But go forward. Siempre adelante, like St. Junipero Serra said, always forward towards the Lord and towards the Father's house.